Jimmy Fallon said, according to most national polls, Joe Biden is leading President Trump by about 10 points. And based on the last election, that means Biden's losing by four points. Jimmy Fallon again. Yep. For Democrats, it still feels eerily similar to the 2016 election. It's like Friday the 13th. And when the kids think Jason's finally dead and you're like, he's right behind you. Jimmy Fallon again. Yeah. According to the polls, Trump is getting crushed right now. All of America is wondering who's going to lose their job first. The president of the United States. We're the head coach of the Jets, <laughs> Stephen Colbert. Today, with infection spiking across the country, Trump hit back at Fauci on a campaign staff phone call with reporters saying people are tired of hearing Fauci and these idiots, all these idiots who got it wrong. Yeah, remember the guy who said it would go away in April? According to the polls, people are really tired of that guy. Amen, Colbert. Fallon. Trump referred to Fauci and other scientists as idiots. Then he planned another giant indoor rally in a COVID hotspot. <laughs> Fallon. Trump then added, listening to scientists is the craziest thing in the whole wide flat world. Colbert. Fauci is the most trusted person on coronavirus in the United States. I don't think that's the attack you think it is. Kimmel. He's definitely jealous of all the positive attention Fauci gets, which he wouldn't even get, by the way, if Trump didn't constantly contradict him. But I don't know why Donald Trump still thinks he can ignore the virus and it'll go away. I mean, that strategy, it didn't work with Don Jr. and Eric, and it isn't going to work here. Kimmel. It's crazy that at the same time Trump is calling Fauci a disaster and an idiot. He's running commercials to make it seem like Fauci said he's doing a great job. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dr. Burks is somewhere out there hiding under a pile of scarves, hoping she doesn't get dragged into this, too. Fallon said he's basically saying, don't listen to the scientists. Listen to me, a guy who was just revived by a team of scientists. And Fallon, yeah, Trump said if we listen to the scientists, we'd have a country in a massive depression. And it's a good thing we didn't because look at us now. We're thriving. Jimmy Fallon writers on fire. Did you see the thing on Twitter the other day? Hashtag Zoom Dick. I'll leave it there. But I just want to share um, once you get familiar with Zoom Dick, uh, I'll just tell you a uh, a nice man who's on CNN. I don't know if he's nice. I've never met him. But a man on CNN, presumably nice man. He was on a Zoom call and he uh, he took it out, as they said on a Seinfeld episode. And I'm bringing this up because uh, Zoom hashtag Zoom Dick was paired up with the Seinfeld. He took it out video and i got a lot of chuckles out of that so do some research there just google hashtag zoom dick and seinfeld he took it out and you'll see what happened hey vulture did their list of 20 up and comers you need to know a uh, really good job by them i think i will do that as a weekend episode but they also isolated some of the individual comics and i'll start to talk about them at the end of the episodes as we go on through the days i'll do one of them today at the end if you have the netflix Dave Chappelle is on Letterman's My Next Guest Needs No Introduction. I want to be excited for this, but every time I go to watch My Next Guest Needs No Introduction, I'm like, all right, we took Late Night with David Letterman, age Dave 40 years, and then got rid of all the things that made that show fun, leaving serious interviews. I mean, I love the young Letterman, but this Netflix thing, I've tried watching it. I mean, like Obama was the guest, and I'm like, eh, I got bored. I'll give it a shot because Chappelle's really good, and I love Letterman, but... I don't know. Hey, Adam Sandler has a new movie coming out. Aren't you psyched? I'm psyched. This one sounds like it might not be horrible. And that's coming from me. It's called Hustle. It is a basketball themed comedy sports movie. Sandler stars as a down on his luck basketball scout. There's a stretch for Adam Sandler. Down on his luck basketball scout who discovers a once in a lifetime player with a rocky past abroad takes it upon himself to bring the phenom to the States without his team's approval against the odds. They have one final shot to prove they have what it takes to make it in the NBA. Queen Latifah and Robert Duvall have joined the cast. That is absolutely stunning to me that Robert Duvall is going to be in an Adam Sandler movie. And the Daily Local News, that's an actual newspaper website, and it is your home for comedy news. Dateline Coatesville, they write, Adam Sandler, who has starred in scores of Hollywood movies, including Happy Gilmore, The Wedding Singer, and Uncut Gems, will be shooting scenes for an upcoming Netflix movie at the Coatesville High School Gymnasium beginning October 26th. This is for the movie I just told you about, Hustle. The Daily Local News reports that for their part in allowing Sandler to film at the Coatesville High School, they will receive $81,170, that's the high school, not the newspaper, along with a new scoreboard, and that's according to Lancaster Online. That's pretty cool. The article also mentions students return November 9th. So I'm not sure if they're doing Zoom High School because of Sandler or COVID. Don't know. But that's the information that I read. Happy days are here again. You'll see what I did there from The Hollywood Reporter. Henry Winkler's Fonzie will reunite with the Happy Days cast this Sunday to raise funds for the Democratic Party of Wisconsin. 
home state of the iconic sitcom Happy Days. He'll be joined by Ron Howard, Donnie Most, Anson Williams, Marion Ross, and one of the writers. So that's Richie, Ralph, Potsy, and the Fonz with Mrs. C. Together once again, how cool is that? The event will be available for a minimum donation of $1. All proceeds will aid Joe Biden's campaign in the key battleground state. That story pairs up nicely with this one from Ben Stiller in Variety. Ben Stiller was just a kid when he met a niece of Henry Winkler at school. So it's Ben Stiller. He's a kid. He meets Henry Winkler's niece. Okay. She found out he was a fan of the Fonz. And she offered to get Stiller an autograph. I got this picture sent to me. It was the Fonz. And it said, hey, Ben, one man's ceiling is another man's floor. Henry the Fonz Winkler. Years later, Stiller got the chance to ask Winkler if the autograph was real. Henry sends me back a note immediately saying, it was not my signature. Stiller says, I had to rethink the last 40 years of my life. But then he said, I'll send you a real one. And two days later, he got a real picture of the Fonz autographed by Henry Winkler. Isn't that nice? From the Independent... An Australian comedian found himself embroiled in a brawl after losing his temper with a heckler. So the heckler heckled, and the comedian Alex Williamson, who's a YouTuber whose stage name is Shooter Williamson, he, this was in Adelaide, Australia, and he uh, shot back at the heckler, and he said, I'm glad they're effing dead, presumably talking about the heckler's parents. I'm glad they're effing dead, so they didn't get to see their son evolve into such a effing useless sack of S. My comedy's above your effing head, C-word. <laughs> he then orders the crowd member to get the F out numerous times and then yells, walk the F away, C word, before growing angrier and throwing a kick and a punch in the crowd member's direction, says this report. A video of the fight was posted on Twitter by the account belonging to the popular Brown Cardigan site. I'm not familiar with Brown Cardigan. As five men are forced to leave, they began pelting Williamson with glass bottles, which can be seen smashing behind him. Oh, my. From Variety, Harrison Ford and Ed Helms are attached to star in the shipwreck comedy The Miserable Adventures of Burt Squire Aboard the Horn High Yo. That is a terrible title that we're all just going to call Burt Squire, right? Inspired by a true story, Burt Squire revolves around a family man portrayed by Helms in the midst of a midlife crisis who embarks on what he hopes will be a dream sailing vacation but ends up shipwrecked in the Atlantic Ocean with Ford's charming but unhinged sea captain. Isn't that just the plot from season nine of The Office with Andy Bernard that we don't see? So, like, can we just pretend this is Andy Bernard? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And John Oliver met with the mayor of Danbury, Connecticut. You know, they've been going back and forth. Well, there's now a sign that says the John Oliver Memorial Sewer Plant, Danbury, Connecticut. Oliver gave a speech. He said... There's a reason this sewer plant means so much to me, and that it's that it represents everything that we need most right now, because think about it. This place takes the worst that humanity can produce and transforms it into something we can live with. And now more than ever, there's something inspirational in that, because at the end of this awful, awful year, what could be more important than evidence that if we want to, we can come together, overcome our differences, and sort our shit out? The John Oliver Memorial Sewer Plant danbury connecticut that is your comedy news for today please subscribe on apple Podcasts or wherever you get your shows thank you for listening see you tomorrow